Okay, good afternoon sa lahat. So, for today, we're going to talk about equipping 21st century uh, teachers with strategies for the new normal. So, I hope uh, you're doing well. Lahat kayo, mga dear ma'ams and sirs. So, kung nagsasaing na, um, sana hindi, hindi masunog ang kanin natin, ang sinaing natin. So, kung nagluluto, si hinaan or patayin mo na yung niluluto. Uh, I know you have lots of things to do at home and even in school. So, thank you so much for being here today. And I hope at the end of our webinar, you'll be able to learn something. So, start na po tayo. Uh, can we see the, uh, the screen? So, there. Okay, so given the new normal, uh, we have to learn more about how we are going to cope up with the education or delivery of learning that we're going to have for our, uh, for our students. Kumbaga, lagi naman nating sinasabi, di ba? Kung gusto, maraming paraan. At kung ayaw, maraming dahilan. Pero dahil teachers tayo, we want the best for our students. So, with that, as 21st century teachers, we would have to be equipped with the strategies that we will need for the new normal. So let's look into this. So equipping 21st century teachers with strategies for the new normal. Uh, I am your speaker for today, I'm Cindy Sikat, and our keywords for today would be education, distance, technology, and of course, the heart. So by the way, uh, my dear teachers, uh, by, by the end of the webinar, yung sa certificate nyo po, i, lalagay yung link sa may comment section and we will make sure that it will be posted right after the, the, the webinar. So, kumbaga po para maiwasan din po natin yung mga manunood lang ng intro, tas kukunin lang yung certificate. So, might as well uh, finish the entire uh, webinar and this is also for you. So, let's start. At the end of the webinar, we are expected to first have a clear vision of our roles as 21st century teachers, be equipped with teaching strategies for the new normal, okay, and then reflect, reflect on the challenges of the pandemic to educators and how these can be solved through a comment. So I am expecting po that at the end of this webinar, you would comment uh, a one, one sentence learning that you got. Although hindi naman siya kapalit is uh, yung certificate, but it would be highly appreciated if you would leave what you have learned from this session. So I would expect that from you po. And aside from that, questions are also welcome. Dun sa comment, uh, comment section, then I will be more than glad to answer them. So, I know we are all experts in our respective fields. So, let's work hand in hand. So, there. So, 21st century teachers. So, as 21st century teachers who aim to create 21st century learners or to guide 21st century, century learners, it is a must that we know our roles. And it is a must that we ourselves have the skills. Sabi nga nila, di ba? You cannot give what you do not have. So, hindi naman natin, hindi naman natin kayang ituro, i-develop ang isang skill na tayo mismo wala sa atin. So, it is just a gentle reminder that we have to continuously learn just in case we still do not know a few or we still have not developed fully yet a few of the 21st century skills. So, Teachers play a key role in training students to develop the skills for the 21st century. We have been uh, hearing about this in seminars. We, I know definitely that if they're going to ask you to enumerate the skills, you know them already. But let's just have um, a rundown. And the teacher is a guide who supports student development from early childhood and throughout the learning process for children, youth, and adults. That's by UNESCO. So, Given that context po, mga dear teachers, we are being reminded that we are training the students, we are guiding them to become ready for the 21st century world. And given that, we are given another challenge, and that is, again, the pandemic or the new normal that we currently have. So, paano po natin kaya mabibigyan ng uh, 
pag-aaral, ng learnings, ng training ang mga bata, given that we are facing a global crisis, not just if, not just in our country, but in, in, in the entire world. Ano po kaya ang pwede nating gamitin? Ano po kaya ang pwede nating gawin? So we're gonna talk about uh, that later. So traits of a 21st century teacher. So kahit po ngayon, alam ko nanonood kayo sa mga cellphones nyo, sa mga laptops nyo, and you're probably even looking after your baby or your kid, or you're, you might be also cleaning, uh, I know that you already have the traits of a 21st century teacher. Alam natin na hindi madaling maging teacher ngayong panahon na to. Hala kasi ng iba um, madali dahil nasa bahay lang tayo. But then, the, the expectations and the tasks are more than, are bigger than the mountain. Okay? So, kumbaga, salute sa lahat ng teachers na nakikinig ngayon kahit naglilinis or nagluluto or kung ano man po ang ginagawa. It's already past uh, the working hours but here we are listening. So, Kudos po sa inyong lahat. Uh, I hope we continue learning, okay? So, 21st century teachers are learner-centered. Ito po yung lagi nating nakikita din sa ating mga class observation tools na nakalagay dapat learner-centered at even in other seminars. Gone are the days that teachers are the stage on the stage. Hindi na po sa atin ang spotlight kung hindi sa mga bata na. So, what does that mean? We only serve as facilitators. They are learning through their own uh, activities and we are there to help them and guide them. Next po, we are guides of learner producers. And when we say learner producers, they create projects, they create work, they create a product that are practically useful or are artistic by nature. So, kumbaga, we are, we are teaching them or guiding them to become creators in their own ways and in their respective fields. We know that wherever we go now, there are lots of producers. At hindi lang po yung producer dun sa concept ng science, kumbaga pati po sa economics and even in the arts. So we would want to touch those. Kumbaga we are on the products, okay? And then techy and willing to be one. Uh, we know that Technology is moving forward in a fast pace. And even if sometimes there are applications, softwares, and other advancements that are very difficult, we are more than willing to learn. Kaya nga po, minsan kahit nagkakamali tayo, ang importante doon, willing po tayong matuto. Sabi nga po nila, it's not enough that you are a page ahead of your students. You should be books or libraries ahead. But in terms of technology, we could at least be at par. Siyempre po, iba po yung generation nila sa generation natin. But that doesn't mean that we are going to stop ourselves from learning. Next po is global. Kumbaga, we're open to diversity. We're, we are multicultural and we can meet the needs and demands of the global market. We are also open to learning like what I've said a while back. Learning is a lifelong process. Sabi nga po ni John Dewey, di po ba? So, we will, we have to be constantly open to learning. Kung hindi po tayo open to learning, wala po ako sa harapan ninyo ngayon. Tama po? So, alam ko napaka-busy ng schedule niya, pero dahil nga po, open po tayo sa learning. You, We are here listening. We are often attending webinars. I know you know that um, parte na ng buhay natin ang mga webinars. Uh, sa isang araw, kung walang webinar, parang lalagnatin ka kasi sanay ka na na nag-webinar. That's how teachers are very willing and open to learning and of course we should be able to connect okay connect not only in the personal level but also digitally speaking moving to the concept of proper communication in the world of the internet flexible kaya nga po tayo nag-aaral ngayon um nag po natin yung bagong modes of learning kasi we are highly adaptive and flexible to the context that we currently have. Kaya nga teacher, di ba? Kapag teacher, lahat kaya. Tama? Kaya nga sabi na magmahal ka ng teacher kasi ang teacher, ang teacher nga, hindi ginigiba pa ng studyante na gusto na tumigil sa pag-aaral. What more ka pa? Di ba? So, uhugot pa eh. Okay. So, flexible po tayo. Alam po natin yan. Mula sa pagiging teacher, nanay, guidance counselor, speaker, ICT um, expert, 
lahat na pati pati pagluluto nagiging ko ka din and even a friend or a younger sibling you all do those those roles that's how flexible we are and that is a trait of a 21st century teacher and of course we are innovators this is already a part of our identity as teachers we always find ways to innovate and to become creative and this could be seen without classrooms that we have with how you with how you decorate your classrooms with how you come up with innovations with how you teach with how you come up with new strategies kaya nga po ang hirap maging teacher pero napaka fulfilling lalo na kung gusto po natin ang ating ginagawa so a teacher needs to be able to formulate construct arrange modify and make sense of information so that it can be understood as knowledge this is by Barbosa's 2020. So, ang um, point po natin dito, as 21st century teachers and even teachers way back, our role is to use or make, transform that highly complex and difficult concept to something easy, bite-sized, and digestible. There's such word. Something that the students could digest na learning uh, so that it could become knowledge. Hindi naman po natin ipapasa sa kung paano natin siya binasa na sobrang hirap, then ibibigay mo din sa kanila na sobrang hirap. We are, uh, we, we change those. We modify them. We construct them. We, we, um, we, if we, we change them to something that is easier for them without, without necessarily changing the content. So, ganyan po ang uh, expectations sa atin. Ang taas, no? Pero, I know we have been doing this. So, 21st century skills, we all know these already, so let's just have a rundown. So, each 21st century skill is broken into one of three categories. Pero para po sa ibang mga uh, categorization, meron po ibang groupings. Pero I would like to emphasize on this, we have the three L's, learning skills, literacy skills, and life skills. So, if we're going to look at this infograph, we have... There's three categories or three major uh, classifications of the skills that are considered <clears throat> in general to be helpful for our students to stay competitive in the changing job market, not only in the local con context, but also in the global market. So for the learning skills, these are the skills that our students need to be equipped to acquire the knowledge that they need. Baga po para Unduhan para maging ex para matuto sila, matuto sila uh, maging expert sila sa kanya-kanya nilang fields. And then we have the literacy skills. Literacy moving beyond the concept of reading and writing, but it, it encompasses the use of information, media, and technology. Our students should be able to determine which is a reliable source from a non-reliable source. Would have to know if the if the post or um the news is uh, fake news or not, and they would have to know how to use the technology. And wherever you go for right now, we all know, kahit sa atin po, di ba? Technology is already part of life, part of our work, part of our careers. So, kung may advantage po tayo, kung alam po natin gamitin ang information, media, and technology, we have an edge over the others. Same goes with our students. If they know how to use it, they already have an edge compared to other students. And of course, life skills. The 21st century skills gives us a holistically developed set, a holistically developed student that has these sets of skills. Kung baga, hindi naman po pwedeng matalino lang, hindi naman po pwedeng teki lang, hindi, hindi po pwedeng magaling lang magsalita, but they should also learn how to deal with life. And this includes learning how to communicate with people, deal with people, how to be productive, how to become leaders, and become flexible. Kumbaga, hindi lang siya efficient sa output niya mismo, hindi lang siya very good sa technology, pati sa pagiging people person. Kumbaga, team player, sabi nga nila. So these are the 21st century skills. This is another grouping for the 21st century skills, but this time it's four Cs. So kumbaga, para... Alam din po natin yung ibang categories. We have the critical thinking or critical thinker, the communicator, the collaborator, and the creator. So, nag, nagmamatch naman po sila sa mga na-discuss natin earlier that we want them to become good in thinking, in solving, in learning. They know how to communicate. They understand how to relay. 
they would understand how to listen as well. They know how to work with each other. And of course, they are creators, di ba? Isa sa mga traits ng isang 21st century teacher is they are lear- uh, they guide learner producers. Kaya nga, we want to have creators. Okay? Okay po tayo? Okay pa po? So, again, if you have questions, feel free to comment sa comment area or the comment section. And for your certificates, the link will be posted at the end of the webinar. Okay? So, fig- for this figure, this is the exa- expansion of the concept of quality education. Uh, ito po yung pwede natin gawing uh, guide para sa movement ng quality education. We start with the essential essential learning uh, areas, the subjects like reading, writing, and arithmetic. And then we move to the bigger concepts like uh, more abstract, more engaged to the society, uh, more global, like sustainable development education, uh, how we think of sustainable ways for development or how, how we actually think of ways to survive without necessarily destroying the environment. Uh, we also have, uh, we also consider the digital literacy like what we have discussed earlier for the literacy skills. How far are we going in terms of netiquettes, okay, and um, being a, a good netizen, okay? Of course, we have discussed the 21st century skills and definitely we're also talking about being global, education for global citizenship. So with that, we have um, the, the outside circle. We move to the processes, associated factors, and conditions that before you would be able to come up with the quality education, you also have to consider these factors. Are the processes okay? Are we given the right conditions? What are the associated factors? Okay? And then, there should always be the lifelong learning. It's always forward. It's always up, upward. Nabanggit ko na nga po kanina, di ba? Na uh, learning is a lifelong process, not only for students, but also for us. That's why we are constantly engaging ourselves in avenues for us to learn. And then we also have two, two, main, um, two main terms that serves as the margins. So we have the equity and the inclusion. For the inclusion, you're not excluding anyone. Everyone can learn despite the differences, despite their socioeconomic status. The, that equality education will not discriminate. And then equity, equity po is different from equality. So good, the very good way to explain this one is that equality is giving them a box of the same, of the same, um, same level, okay? Pero hindi natin consider kung may mas matangkad ba dun sa isa. Kasi let's imagine this one. If you have a wall and then you have three students, kunwari sila to, may hindi matangkad, sakto lang at matangkad. If they cannot see what's beyond the wall, bibigyan mo sila ng um, yung one foot na box, aangat sila. Pero yung matangkad lang ang makakita dun sa kung ano nangyari sa kabila. But with equity, you give them different sizes of boxes. But for them to be equally given, to be given the equal opportunities to see what's happening on the other end. Kumbaga po yung nangyayari sa mga um, uh, beginning readers natin, advanced readers, independent readers, hindi po same treatment ang ginagawa natin. Kumbaga, nag-vary po based dun sa kung, kung ano yung pangangailangan ng estudyante. Pero, ang goal po natin, silang lahat nakabasa silang lahat makuha nila yung competency. Okay po? So there, hopefully, we will be able to give quality education even if we are facing the new normal. Why do we have to consider the 21st century skills as 21st century teachers? Because these are essential in the global market. We want our students to be successful. Diba po, masakit kapag nakita mo yung estudyante mo after niyang graduate, wala siyang trabaho. Parang may part sa'yo na, ala, saan ako nagkamali? So, even for the institution per se, they do a uh, tracer studies for them to check how are their how are their graduates working in their in the current market in the job market. So, important not only for the name of the school but also for the sake of the future of the students. The key focus of these skills is definitely the ability to enact or to adapt to change. So, kailangan marunong mag-adjust sa pagbabago. Katulad po nito, yung sitwasyon natin ngayon, 
ang laking pagbabago po nito. Ay hindi niyo po i-admit, uh, alam ko po, parang hindi po natin ma-imagine kung paano po tayo magtuturo niyan kasi parang sobrang iba sa nakagawian natin. So, dahil po kaya natin to, dahil may 21st century skills po tayo at gusto po natin matuto, lalo ang ating mga estudyante, we know that we can we can work on this and we are highly adaptable to change. And why? Industries always change in terms of process and methodology and you could see this everywhere. It's constantly changing. So, ayaw naman po natin mapag-iwanan ng ating mga estudyante. So, what's the face of the new normal? Tapos na po tayo sa pag-establish sa konsepto ng 21st century teachers and 21st century learners. What's the new normal? We have physical distancing. We can't have crowded places. Hence, face-to-face -face, um, instruction might be far from our reach uh, at the moment because we still do not have the treatment or the vaccine for the for the COVID-19. So, bawal po. Kung baga, kahit sa atin ngayon, kung dati nakakapag-mall ka, no, after mo magturo or pag-stress ka, nakakalabas ka, ngayon hindi pwede basta-basta. Kung lalabas ka man, dapat naka-face mask. Minsan, it's not enough. Dapat may shield pa. Okay? Plus, uh, constant na pag-alcohol, pag nakaka-paranoid nga po. Diba? Minsan, Minsan akala mo meron ka sore throat kung ano-ano lang naiisip mo, baka may COVID ka na, ngayon napaparanoid ka lang pala. Sobrang iba ang stress ng dulot ng pandemic na to. Closure of numerous companies and businesses leading to the socio-economic challenge from homes to the entire world. Maari pong ilan sa mga mag-aaral natin, meron, meron sa kanila ang magulang nila na wala ng trabaho or meron sa kanila na nag-close yung businesses nila. So ano po yung magagawa natin bilang mga teachers para matulungan pa rin silang mag-aral. Definitely po, hindi po natin sila matutulungan mabangon yung business nila ulit. Pag po tumama tayo sa loto, pwede na po siguro. Pero um, kapag po bigla tayong yumaman, bigla kang naka, nakadig ng ginto, di ba? Pero for now, the financial uh, assistance is difficult and everybody's in a challenge for, uh, for, uh, for, the, for the resources. Kaya nga, ang dami nga po nagkakaroon ng iba't ibang racket. And with that, as a teacher, how would you be considered given that situation? Eh, kung walang internet, wala na palang pambayad ng internet si bata, what, what could we do? Okay? And then, of course, the very face of the new normal is the threat of the unseen enemy. And that is COVID-19. So vaccines are still in process of being worked out and the virus is still on the loose. So, Hindi natin alam kung kailan hanggang kailan pero I know we we are all praying that this would end already kasi grabing damage na ang na, na, nagawa ng COVID-19 na to. So kumbaga we want things to be normal again but then we have to face the reality it will take time. Who would have thought na magkakaganito ang 2020, right? I still remember 2019 and I miss it already. Sometimes I even joke around that uh, baka pwedeng i-reformat si 2020, di ba? Kasi masyadong, ano, masyadong sunod-sunod ang action. Baka pwedeng ibalik, mag-rewind, mag-2019, tas jump na agad sa 2021. Ah, so, hindi naman po pwede yun. Kumbaga, everything happens for a reason and we are here right now because we are being tested and we, we are being taught a lesson. So, yun po, that's the face of the new normal. As for the new normal education, allow me, allow me to explain again or reiterate the depth ed learning continuity plan for those who are teaching in elementary, junior high school, and senior high school, just for the misconceptions. So definitely, we're going to push through by August 24. And then the, we would be having various types of modalities, hindi lang po online learning. So kumbaga po, meron tayong mga modules, meron po tayong TV or radio programs, at saka po, um, uh, we could also have online learning for those uh, who has the for those who have the access to the internet. Kung baga po um, sa mga nagsusulat ng ng modules dito, alam na alam na yun na po kung ano yung itsura ng modular modular approach natin dahil isa tayo sa mga nagsulat. And then for the misconception number three, definitely wala po tayong face to face meeting. And then what is blended learning? I would be going back to this one later po dahil i-discuss po natin ang types of blended learning. But definitely, this would be 
combination of face-to-face -face and online learning or distance learning but dahil uh, hindi po pwede ang online ang face-to-face -face learning I mean online po tayo. Kumbaga, ang ibe-blend po natin TV, radio, modules, online learning. Depende po sa kung anong pwede din sa lugar. So ito po yung process flow for school-based modular distance learning. Nakuha ko nga po pala itong mga screenshots dun sa uh, DepEd Philippines, dun sa ginawa nilang press briefing about DepEd's learning continuity plan. So here we have modular, the modular uh, approach. We have the distribution of modules na may kasamang parent guide and parents guide and checklist. And then the teachers would be open for consultation with the parents and students pwedeng via text or teleconference, okay? And then, i-collect po yung outputs every week. So, kung iniisip ng iba na ano paano yun, magba-materialize po. Gaya nga po nang nasabi natin, basta gusto po natin, ma-achieve natin, magagawa po natin. And just to underscore, the learning continuity plan of DepEd for the new normal is not one size fits all policy. The modality to be used will be responsive to the context and available resources of the schools and the learners. Gagawan po, gagawan po natin ang paraan yan. Hindi po natin pababayaan ang mga mag-aaral natin. Kung wala silang resources, definitely we will find ways to help them continuously learn. Sayang naman po yung isang school year. Okay? So ito po yung mga different modalities. Kung meron kang internet, uh, meron kang laptop, pwede ka sa distance learning, with the online digital uh, modules, kung wala kang internet, pero meron kang laptop, okay? We have the offline digital modules. Kung wala kang, wala kang internet, pero may TV ka, tsaka radio ka, you can have distance learning via TV and radio plus the printed module. Kung walang TV, computer, radio, pero meron kang will para mag-aral, pwede, pa pwede pa rin ang distance learning but the same printed modules, okay? Kung meron ka lahat, you could have blended learning. This would include the TV, the radio, the digital and printed modules. And definitely, ang mangyayari is homeschooling. Okay? Kaya nga po, partners natin dito ang mga magulang. Hindi po magiging madali, but definitely, kung pag magtutulungan po natin, we would be able to overcome this and help our students continuously learn. Okay. Teaching strategies for the new normal. Ito na po. A few of the strategies or even all of the strategies might be something that you have heard or you have encountered already. And this will just serve as a clarification and an intensification of the concepts na pwede po natin gamitin sila para sa new normal. Our key words for here, uh, for this part, is knowledge, technology, distance, heart, and learning. We target for them to have the knowledge through technology despite the distance. But if they do not have the technology, despite the distance, we would still lead them to learning using our hearts as guides and our passion to teach. Kumbaga, we will still find other modes for them to continuously learn. So, let's have the blended learning. So, madami pong uh, types of blended learning. We have the outside-in, we have the supplemental, the inside-out, mastery-based, Flipped classroom, the remote, project-based, self-directed, flex lab rotation, station rotation, and individual rotation. These are all different types. I would go uh, go about them one by one, po, but allow me to emphasize that for some types of blended learning, they, they require face-to-face -face instruction. So that would not work po for the meantime. Okay? But at least we know that they're existing. Okay? So for blended learning, we have online learning. We have the personalized online learning. We have the small group or the teacher-led small group instruction. We have the collaborative and the individual. So station rotation blended learning, it is a model that includes students rotating through uh, stations on a fixed schedule with one as an online learning station. This is common in the elementary due to the rotation process. So ito po yung uh, picture. So, kumbaga, you have various you have various stations. One could be a learning station, the other one might be a collaborative station, and then you have the online learning station for the uh, for the students to learn with the teacher and then the small group 
uh, small group discussion. So, kumbaga po nagbabary yung mga stations, nagmove si student from one station to another, yung mga students po natin. But, for the concept of face-to-face, -face, hindi po muna pwede. So, ito po yung pwede natin consider first uh, rotation blended learning. We have collaborative, uh, we have personalized uh, practice online or video lesson. Then, magkakaroon po ng small group offline discussion. Then, magkakaroon ng real-time feedback. Importante po ito, mga teachers. And then, collaborative offline challenge. Then, it goes on, it's, it goes on. So, ganoon po ang itsura ng station rotation blended learning. Next po is remote blended learning or also called as the enriched virtual uh, type of learning or approach. Ito po, si teacher papasok lang po sa Excel na kapag kailangan ni student. The completion of work with intermittent meeting with the teacher or only as needed. Different po ito sa flipped classroom. And it's a mix, it's a mix of self-directed, flex-blended learning and flipped classroom. Kung baga po, si student, the student is the student is given the chance to do the task on his or her own and would would only ask for help when he or she needs it, okay? The coursework will be remotely and independently done, okay? Next, flex blended, blended learning. This is the backbone of online learning, even if there are offline activities that are directed to students. So for this one po, um, the modalities are customized, but they are also fluid and highly flexible. Kaya nga po flex blended learning. Uh, usually, learning takes place sa traditional na classroom, but uh, homeworks are done at home. But in this case, syempre pwede natin pwedeng gawin yon. Face-to-face uh, -face support happens when needed, like small group uh, instruction, group projects, and as well as individual tutoring. Uh, versatile in terms of uh, addressing the needs of both formal and informal schooling. Yun lang, hindi po natin magagawa yung face-to-face -face, face support. Pwede po yung ano, pwede po yung online muna, but then again, we're talking about here, getting to address both the needs of formal and informal schooling. Merong online learning at meron ding offline activities. Minsan nga overlapping po sila kung papansin ninyo after I discuss or all of the 12, there are types that are overlapping. And of course, definitely because they are under the umbrella of blended learning. Flipped classroom, baliktad. Okay, so binaliktad ba? Uh, kasi po, di ba kapag nagtuturo tayo sa classroom, uh, we usually start with a discussion with our students. We guide them, we discuss, and then they do the activities or the assessment on their own. But here, um, the content is given to them through an online material, a video, or a printed text. And then the teacher and the students will support after. And that is during the activity part. So learning in new contexts, okay? Uh, Originally speaking, it's learning at home, then studying in school. But in our end, on our end, in the online version, this is practically viewing the lecture first and then being guided by the teacher during the process of learning the, 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 the doing the activities. So, maga po kung math yan, kung ma, math uh, lesson, panunuorin po mo niya yung video lesson nyo, presenting the concepts and giving examples. And by the time he or she com computes, Nandun ka, naka-online kayo for, for him or her to be guided in the process. Kasi po alam naman po natin na minsan, one ex definitely, one example is not enough. And the, the initial stage is that you are in the initial stage, you are needed for guidance. And once the student knows what to do already, it's already okay. For literature, it's, it could be like allowing them to watch the, the film version of the literary piece. And afterwards, for the processing part, when you answer the guide questions already, there could already be the support from the teacher and the students. For the individual rotation blended learning, on the other hand, this permits the learners to rotate and station using individual schedules. Oh, medyo tedious po ng konti. Pero kung may nakaset na rin naman pong ano, schedule at may software po, walang problema. So activities rotate on, on a scheduled playlist. The personalization of student learning is determined by individual schedules. So, kumbaga, hindi lang po siya group. Um, this is highly personalized. It focuses on the student and there's the, there's the playlist that 
that is being followed either set by the software or by the teacher. And then, project-based blended learning, okay? In this part po, I know you have heard a lot of webinars about project-based learning, but for project-based blended learning, for the online learning, especially for self-directed learning, the goal of the student is to come up with projects. And these projects in forms of assignments, activities, and products would be the proof of learning. Kaya nga po project-based. So, online learning is, serves as a support for the project-based learning. Pwede kapag may concepts na hindi maintindihan or habang ginagawa yung project, may hindi cleared, the student can uh, be in touch with the teacher. Self-directed blended learning, on the other hand po, is the combination of online and face-to-face -face learning leading to their personalized inquiry, meet formal learning goals, and connect with mentors digital, digitally and physically. So in the self-directed blended learning, uh, let's, be, uh, let's be reminded that uh, in this case, wala, wala po muna face-to-face learning, but the roles of the teachers and, the online, and online learning change. Ito po yung hindi masyadong formal. There is no formal online courses to finish. And the very challenge here is first to judge the, to judge the learning experience without the process of the authentication. And then definitely to keep them or to sustain them, uh, to sustain them um, to learn more, even if the platform is uh, online and even if the type of learning is self-directed. Yan po kasi medyo mahirap dyan eh. Kasi yung ibang mga bata, baka uh, alam naman po natin na iba kapag sa klaso may kalagang challenging na mga uh, gift ng Panginoon sa atin ng mga estudyante na kahit nandun na tayo, uh, chinachallenge na yung classroom management natin that there, sometimes the learning drive is not sustained. So, kumbaga challenge na yon pwede na siya maging challenge sa classroom, sa face-to-face -face instruction. At the same time, that could also be a problem in the online world. At mas magiging challenge po po yan sa online teaching or sa distance learning, sa blended learning. Bakit po? Kasi hindi po nila tayo kasama in person. So ito po, isa sa mga challenges ng new normal, uh, ng new normal is paano mo uh, sustain ang interest ng bata para matuto. Inside out blended learning. This one, it's beyond the physical classroom. You start with the classroom, then you go outside. Okay? Nagagawa po natin to kadalasan kapag anong mga panahon pwede pa po tayo mag-classes sa loob ng uh, sa, sa school, sa face-to-face. -face. It's less critical. It's an outward, outward approach, just like project-based blended learning. So the students move between digital and physical spaces. So pwede from your classroom, then you would ask them to do a project that will involve um, the internet or the use of the internet or other technology or to come up with a video that that would lead them to filming outside in, that's that would be inside out blended learning and the counterpart is the outside in blended learning here you start outside this could be related with field trips with um, educational trips okay uh, in a sense that they would be exposed with the outside but at the end of the day or uh, the, ne the, ne the next day, the students would have to process and to do their activities inside the classroom. So from the outside, inside. So the classroom would serve as the closing part. It's the closed circuit avenue. Baga dito po natin pinaprocess. And then, for the supplemental blended learning, you have this, from the word itself, su supplemental, support lang po. Baga support mo, sinusupplement mo yung activities. That working, uh, the work online or learning face to face are supplemented, uh, are used to supplement their learning. Po, um, this could be, uh, this could be applied in the face to face instruction and even in online version. Pag po supplemental blended learning, if you have your modules with you, you have the you have the online learning. You teach them online, then they still have the support through the modules. Or if it's the face-to-face, -face, pwedeng after mong ituro, face-to-face -face, nung, nung mga panahong pwede pa, okay? After mong ituro, may pang support. Pwedeng tingnan niya online or pwedeng tingnan niya yung uh, offline copy niya, okay? And then, mastery-based blended learning, ito yung medyo pwedeng 
may impact at the same time pwedeng complicated because the assessment is on the mastery part. Kumbaga, ang goal natin dito ma-meet yung objectives talaga. Okay? So, yun po. Yun po yung uh, concept ng ng blended learning. So, we have 12. Overlapping po yung iba. Tama. So, let's try to check this one. We go back to this. So, these, all of these are working towards one goal and that is to give the students a merging of two different ways to teach the student ideally. Pero at, at the end of the day, ang goal, matuto ang bata. At gagamitin mo lahat ng pwede mong gamitin modes para matuto ang bata. For distance learning, lagi po natin naririnig, this is the combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning methods. So ito po yung, um, yung bata na tututo or na engage sa klase ng at the same time, ng sabay-sabay or at the same time, which is synchronous learning. This is where Hangouts, Meet, Zoom, Team, Facebook Rooms, that just like what we're doing right now, are involved, okay? Kumaga po, sabay-sabay, magkakasama at the same time. But we also have the asynchronous learning, which is done outside the class time. We have Canvas, we have Khan Academy, Quizlet, Wiser Me, and Google Classroom. So yung mga to po, bibigyan po nila ng, parang binibigyan ka ng platform para yung bata makasagot sa time na pwede siyang sumagot. Pero definitely, meron pa rin limitation dun sa oras na uh, oras na sasagutan niya yung activity. And then, for the individualized learning, it is a method of learning that is dependent on the interest and ability of the learners. So here, when you see individualized, we really draw attention to the preferences, the style, the interest of the learners. So we have to consider the purpose, the realistic goals, review of goals. We monitor the student pro progress through their modules. And then, of course, definitely have to involve the parents. And we have other approaches as well, like open textbooks, kaya nga po may DepEd Commons, and other um, open resources. And then we also have the capability approach. In this sense, we are really considering the capacity of the student to do the task. Kumbaga, hindi less po sa pagiging heartless. What do I mean? We're being more considerate. No consider po natin yung situation or context ng bata. Um, yes, we want to meet the uh, we want to meet the competencies, but we also consider wh where they are coming from. Ano bang kaya niya for the meantime? And then of course, offline learning ap approaches just like the modules. Okay, so there. By the way, po. Uh, gaya nga po ng nasabi ni Salandana ng Corpus, there is no such thing as a single best method. So, kumbaga po, we would be the best judge to determine which would be the best approach for our learners. Kasi tayo po ang may kilala sa mga anak natin. And we know better uh, since we have, we have our experiences in teaching and we know the content of our, of our subjects or the lessons that we have to teach. So here are the following strategies pa po that we could use during the discussion. Definitely learner-centered. It should uh, definitely, uh, there should be the le reflective learning. <clears throat> Why do we have to make them reflect during the discussion? This is the time that they could share their ideas and you could guide them in the processing part. It's also experiential learning, okay? Make them uh, experience, but within the boundaries of their homes. Hindi po pwedeng nakikirid away po tayo sa mga ideals, sa standards po natin, sa, nap, sa magandang project ngayong new normal. Dahil alam naman po natin mahirap lumabas at hirap din po ang karamihan sa atin. Lalo na po yung mga anak natin, yung mga, mga studyante natin na yung mga magulang na wala ng trabaho. Of course, there's spiral progression. We can't start with the most difficult. We start with the easiest, the basic. And the student will step on that for him or her to move on to the next level. Nang pahirap, nang pahirap, nang pahirap. Pero definitely, hindi mo siya bubulagain ng sobrang hirap. Kaya nga po sa pagsusulat ng module, di po ba hindi naman po pwedeng unang activity pa lang sobrang hirap na. Kapag po ganun ang nangyari, hindi na po niya sasagutan. Sa discussion naman, kapag sobrang hirap, agad ang in-explain mo, baka hindi na makinig yan. Baka ganun lang, pero hindi na pala sa'yo nakikinig. Baka, baka nanonood na pala somewhere or naglalaro na lang. Then competence-based, that's why we have our MELCs or most essential learning, um, most essential learning um, 
competencies. We also have the research-based uh, research based uh, approach in discussion na lahat po nang ipapakita natin research-based and we would want to emphasize that. Okay? And then, okay, so as I've mentioned, let's go back to the concept of um, research-based na emphasize natin na hindi lahat nang nasa internet is also pwedeng gamitin. No consider din natin yung credibility ng source. That's why we do research na hindi lang isa ang reference natin. Kumbaga, we look through the different sources that we could possibly get for have for us to have reliable information. And contextualized or localized, nilalapit natin sa kanila yung learning. Kumbaga, online na eh. Nandun na yung barrier ng distance or online. Ngayon, ang challenge mo is paano mo mailalapit sa kanya despite the distance yung topic mo. So, for example, uh, you would want to help them develop the reading comprehension or one of the uh, reading, reading um, strategies. Definitely, pagbabasahin mo siya ng material na yung text, contextualized. Hindi naman po pwedeng pagbasahin mo siya ng material na foreign yung content. Mahirap na nga achieve yung reading strategy Pahihirapan mo pa siya dun sa content. That's why it's very important that it should be localized and contextualized. And then, it would be easier for them to understand, especially if they know at nakikita nila sa community nila kung ano yung ginagamit mo example during the discussion. And then, it should also be inclusive, okay? We won't, uh, we won't allow any student to feel like they're being left behind or left out. Lahat i-embrace natin. It's encompassing, okay? It's all including, so kaya nga inclusive. Okay? And for the activities, constructivism, um, help them come up with their learning to construct their own learning based on the activities. It should also be interdisciplinary. We know this. We touch this whenever we have our class observation tool, right? That we should also be able to integrate other subjects. Lots and huts, okay? The order thinking skills, we start with the low. Then going higher, hindi naman pwedeng again, isang bagsakan na, na nakakatakot na essay question agad na hindi mo, hindi alam ng bata kung saan planeta mo nakuha. Masyashock na lang siyang ganun, wala na siyang masasagot. But we start with the basic first. Like, who, what, when, where, five W's and one A siya. Hanggang mapunta tayo dun sa critical na question. Differentiated instruction, we consider their preferences. We integrate different um, teaching methods. Okay, para hindi naman monotonous, hindi naman boring, hindi naman repetitive. And also, we consider their multiple intelligences na pwede natin i-connect sa differentiated instruction. Na lahat ng uh, trip or gusto mag-poetry, pwede sila mag-poetry writing, yung mga magaling sa, sa arts, pwede sila mag-drawing, um, stuff like that. Okay, then the grasps. Um, nagamit natin to for uh, during the time na nag ubd tayo, if you still remember. A G is for the goal. R is for the role, A is for the audience, S is for the situation, uh, P is for the, um, S is for the situation, P is for the product, and, and, and then S is for the standards or criteria for success. So in this case, meron silang big picture. Kung baga kompleto kung ano yung in-expect mo sa kanila, wala nang tanong na, mama, ano po ba yung gagawin ko, etc., etc. It's all there in the grasps. But then again, these uh, methods or the, uh, these ways would still be um, still be the best best selected by the teacher considering the needs of the learners and the ty type of the lesson hindi naman pwedeng ay it sounds good so yun na lang hindi naman po pwede. so i know these are not new to you so kubaga tinitingnan lang po natin kung paano natin pwede pang magamit at ire-remind lang po natin ang isa't isa na pwede pa siyang gamitin for the new normal Okay, considerations for teaching in the new normal. Importante po ang presence nyo, instructor presence. I just don't know if it's me, but I could imagine that um, the new normal setting would be, could be more, more demanding and mas matrabaho siya in a sense because you would have, you would have to divide yourself. Um, so mga, you, you would have to divide yourself and your attention to, to different modalities. 
And you have to be always ready kapag tatawag ang parent or may tanong ang bata regarding the activities. And then, uh, you would also have to constantly give the feedback regarding their activities. So, kumbaga, challenge talaga sa atin to. And then, student peer communication and contact. There should still be a student peer communication, but then again, within, within, the, within their capacity, within the boundaries of their capabilities. Again, we have to use variety of teaching methods and strategies. There should be metacognition and support to students. Na nandun pa rin yung pag, uh, pag encourage sa kanila, nandun pa rin yung pag um, magsabi sa kanila na kaya nila and we could give them strategies and tips as well. Okay po. So again, uh, we have to make sure that we still provide the support that our students need. Okay? And then, what's important is the constant feedback. So, kumbaga, nandun pa rin yung presence natin. Mahirap yung hindi nila na-feel na nandun tayo. So, despite the online nature of the, of the situation, dapat we still give them the constant feedback and support. Okay po? So, reminders to the 21st century teachers. So, first, we have a plethora of teaching materials. We have audiovisual, online videos, game-based sites, and content guides. So, kumbaga po, hindi po tayo mauubusan na. Okay, so kumbaga po, wala po tayong chance para mawala ng resources or references or supplemental materials. So, you have audiovisual, online videos like TED Talks or you could consider TED TV, crash courses, documentaries, and YouTube videos. So, pero definitely po, lalo na po sa mga YouTube videos, before we ask our students to watch, make sure that we watch these first. Kumbaga po na content check po natin, na credibility check din po natin. Hindi po kasi lahat ng nakikita natin online is credible. Um, that's why we really have to screen things first. Uh, for the TED Talks or TED TV, I really, really um, recommend this one kasi ang dami niyang kinocover na mga topics. At the same time, yung mga speakers po nila, they are really good and experts. Next po is game-based sites. I could give you more than more than this, 50 or even 100. Ang dami pong sites na pwedeng gamitin na game-based. At the same time, they are learning. So what are these? Like Kahoot, Quizlet, Quizzes, Socrative, ABC, uh, Answerables, Brainios, Bubba Brain, Cookie, and many more. I could give you a link to the article that states all of the game-based sites. At hindi lang po pang math, pang English, meron din po pang science, and any all, and other subjects as well. So, kumbaga po, tayo na lang po ang namimili kung anong pwede natin gamitin. But definitely, pwede lang po ito sa mga may connections. Tapos sa mga nagtuturo po ng English or literature, you also have the content guides. You have the spark notes, common lit, lit charts, Book rags, JSTOR, Shmoop, Pink Monkey, Great Saver, Novel Guide, and many other more. So, many other, I mean. So, for this one po, let's also remind our students na mas maganda pa rin pong basahin nila yung primary text. Yung content guide po is just a, it's just a guide. Okay po? And of course po, it is important that we also read the contents of these content guides even in case we're gonna recommend one, especially po kapag magpapa-essay tayo for, for us to know the content kasi baka kinapipaste na pala ng bata. And let's please remind our students that they should not plagiarize. Okay po? These serves as guides but not exactly the source of the answers. And then po, so another is to Hone down the objectives if we're going to present them to the students. We have to make them student-friendly. Ang bibigat po ng mga LCs natin, mga learning competencies natin, kung babasahin mo ikaw mismo teacher, minsan nasusok ka, di ba? So, hindi naman pwedeng ipapasa mo sa student at masusok din siya, hindi pwede yun. Kung bagay ito tone down mo sa level nila at para maintindihan nila, ah, ito yung gusto nating ma-achieve at the end of the um, lesson. Consider the current situation. I've been telling you this since a while back. Consideration, <clears throat> consider the current situation first over your expectations. As they have said, Maslow first before you bloom by LASIK 2009. 
consider their needs, consider what you are uh, experiencing, consider the necessities first before you go to the fulfillment of the objectives. Ang ganda nga, no? Mas no before you bloom, okay? Yung situation muna nila, yung needs muna nila before yung expectations mo or yung yung mga objectives mo. Siyempre, kung life and death situation, tapos gusto mo objectives mo pa din, napaka-unfair naman yun. Napaka-unethical. Contextualization and localization, I, I mentioned you, I mentioned this uh, already, that we should always consider what's, uh, what, what, what they are, um, what they are into, uh, what the community has, what your locality has. Bring the lesson near them. Um, make make them appreciate the lesson by giving by by bringing it closer to their hearts because you are using examples that they they know and are close to their hearts as well. And don't forget, let's not forget, my dear teachers, the Rosenthal effect or the Pygmalion effect. Kung umpisa pa lang, iniisip mo na hindi mag-work, ay, hindi to work ay, hindi nila kaya to. Wala na. Finish na. Kumbaga dito, we are being reminded that our expectations will affect the learners. So, mas maganda po, kung mag-expect na tayo, yung maganda natin. Kahit po pansinin natin to sa mga anak natin, sa mga partners natin, sa ibang tao, kapag hindi maganda yung expectations mo, may time na naapektuhan talaga siya. Naapektuhan sila. So, same with our students. If we think positively, if we uh, have good expectations and we actually tell them as a form of motivation, that could influence them. So here are my references po. And before I end it with a quote, you would find the link for the certificate po sa baba, sa comment section. And then uh, make sure that you comment what you've learned for this webinar in a single sentence so, so that you would know uh, if you have, you have gotten something and if there are comments and suggestions, please make sure that you comment. Teaching, my dear teachers, is a work of art, okay? So despite all of the strategies that I've mentioned, uh, even if I'm going to give you a thousand methods, approaches, and strategies, if you do not have the heart to teach, that all of those will be pointless. And our students right now would need a teacher, not only with the knowledge, but a teacher with the heart. A teacher with the heart who is willing to help them learn despite the pandemic. So again, my dear teachers, teaching is a work of heart and we are expected to teach it with our hearts, okay? So with that, um, I hope you've learned something from our webinar. It's already getting late. Pwede na po tayong kumain yan. Pwede na po tayong mag-dinner. Uh, tignan po natin yung mga niluluto natin. Baka nasunog na. So salamat po sa time. I hope you've learned a lot from this uh, webinar and please don't forget your, your certificates sa comment section ibibigay po yung link and I hope you would be able to join us for the upcoming seminars pa din po. So with that, I'm, I'm Teacher Cindy. Okay, and that's it. Good night po. Salamat po sa time.